It is time for 5 NFL picks for week 2 of the 2024 regular season. I'm Professor MJ, holder of a PhD in statistics from Quebec in Canada. The number one goal of this YouTube channel is to grow your bankroll. As simple as that. Speaking of boosting your bankroll, let me teach you something important. Betting point spreads or totals is fun, no doubt about it. But if you truly want to make money from your NFL bets, you have got to focus on proposition bets, also called prop bets. The lines are much easier to beat. There are so many offerings on each game that sportsbooks cannot set lines that are all accurate. On occasion, there are some bargains to be found, which means lines that are too high relative to the true probability of winning. I have been refining a mathematical model whose long goal is to beat NFL prop bets. It has made a return on investment around 9% across the past 7 seasons. We're talking about a big and reliable sample of bets here. Now, in this video, I'm going to present 5 NFL picks against the spread. But if you want to put the odds in your favor by going for prop bets, I'll have an offer you don't want to miss towards the end of this video, alright? Okay, let's get the party started with 5 betting tips for week number 2. Pick number one on NFL point spreads goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers, minus two and a half points on the road against the Broncos. In prior videos, I told you about how I did not understand the decision of starting Russell Wilson over Justin Fields. The team's offensive line is suspect, so it makes more sense to have a mobile quarterback under center. An injury to Wilson forced Mike Tomlin to give the start to Fields. The latter did not make any mistake last week in Atlanta, which led to a boring 18-10 victory. Pittsburgh won the game despite not scoring any offensive touchdown. They will face a much weaker defense this week, so I think Fields and company could enjoy some success, while not necessarily lighting up the scoreboard. However, scoring 20 points should be enough to beat the spread given how bad Denver's offense looked last week, and based on how great Pittsburgh's defense showed up in Atlanta. Rookie Bo Nix does not appear to be ready. He completed 26 of 42 passes for a total of 138 yards. What? That amounts to a meager 3.3 yard average per attempt which is incredibly bad. Nix also threw a couple of interceptions, and he almost exclusively attempted short passes. I don't see how the Broncos could score more than 14 or 17 points here. Pittsburgh's defense shut down an Atlanta offense that features many playmakers, like Bijan Robinson, Drake London, and Kyle Pitts. The Falcons' offense totaled just 226 yards of offense. My final prediction would be the Steelers taking this game by a 23-13 score. My second NFL pick for Week 2 is as follows. Under 41 points to be scored in the Colts vs Packers matchup. Malik Willis gets the nod for Green Bay following Jordan Love's injury late in the game against the Eagles. In 2022, Willis completed 31 of 61 passes, a low 50.8% completion rate, while tossing 0 TD pass versus 3 interceptions. However, he was able to move the ball with his legs, as shown by his 27 rushes for 123 yards and a score on the ground. Green Bay's game plan is pretty obvious if they want to have a chance to win despite Love's absence. Run the ball. The Colts are likely to get a heavy dose of Josh Jacobs. 
I'm sure Matt Lafleur will remind Malik Willis to avoid making critical turnovers. That will be a point of emphasis for the Packers. Everything that I've said so far points to a game where the clock runs and the game ends with few points on the board. Let's consider the other side of the ball now. Anthony Richardson was inconsistent throwing the ball last week. As a matter of fact, he picked up just 9 completions in 19 attempts. The positives from this game were a couple of long throws. But don't you think the Packers will do everything they can to prevent big explosive plays? They will force Richardson into long sustained drives, which will milk the clock even more. For all of these reasons, I believe we'll witness a low scoring game, which is why I am backing the under. My third NFL pick for week 2 goes to the Tampa Bay Bucks as 7 point underdogs in Detroit. My first argument concerns the revenge factor. The Bucks were ousted from the playoffs following a 31-23 defeat at Ford Field. And that was after losing against those same Lions in Week 6 via a 26 score in Tampa. Despite the offensive coordinator change, Baker Mayfield did not skip a beat by leading 5 consecutive scoring drives to open the game against Washington. He ended his day with 4 TD passes, no picks, and 289 passing yards. I am aware that Washington's defense isn't great. Detroit's pass defense is better, but they are not world beaters either. They still gave up 317 passing yards to Matthew Stafford last week, so I think Mayfield can exploit them as well. He has great receivers around him. That being said, I have to admit I'm worried about Tampa's banged up secondary. It might be difficult for them to stop Detroit's passing offense, but I still believe the Bucks will keep it close enough to cover the 7 points. Up next, pick number 4 goes to the Jaguars laying 3 points against Cleveland. The Browns have a knack for disappointing us. They fell flat against the Cowboys a game in which QB Deshaun Watson looked abysmal. I think it's time to give up on him. He hasn't been good since 2020. Last week he went 0 for 10 on throws of 15 plus air yards. He truly hit rock bottom. On top of that, a new lawsuit was filed against him, which could very well distract him. Meanwhile, if not for a Travis Etienne fumble at the goal line, the Jaguars would have probably prevailed in Miami last week. Instead, the team fell apart after that critical mistake. Rookie Brian Thomas may become the team's number one wide receiver. He will contribute to make this offense hard to stop, with Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis and Evan Engram all catching passes from Trevor Lawrence. Even running back Tank Bigsby was hot last week after drawing rave reviews during training camp. This offense has a lot of firepower. Here is the icing on the cake. Don't you think Jacksonville remembers losing 31-27 against the Browns in week 14 against a Joe Flacco-led team? In that game, Flacco piled up 311 passing yards with 3 TDs and 1 pick while Trevor Lawrence was the victim of three interceptions. It will be payback time this weekend. Pick number five concerns an NFC East battle between the Giants and the Commanders. Both teams lost last week, but which of these two clubs do you think has the most positive mindset right now? In my opinion, the answer is clear. The Commanders. That's why my fifth pick is the Washington Moneyline. The Giants looked dreadful last week. They were beaten 28-6 at home against a team led by Sam Darnold. Ouch! Can Daniel Jones rebound from his poor Week 1 performance against a vulnerable Washington defense this week? He looked lost against an OK defense at home last week. 
So I don't expect him to put that many points on the board while playing in front of a loud crowd. The Jaden Daniels era has begun in Washington. He was not so great as a passer last week. He attempted just four passes with 10 plus air yards while completing just one of them. Daniels stuck to short throws, which showed on the stat sheet because the two leading receivers were running backs Austin Eckler and Brian Robinson. Then we had tight end Zach Ertz, who compiled just 28 receiving yards. However, Daniels showed great things as a runner. He rushed 16 times for 88 yards, the second highest rushing total for a QB's first career game. Last year, the G-Men won both meetings. That means we have once again the famous revenge factor on our side. The match played in Washington was particularly frustrating for the Commanders. They dominated total yardage, 404 to 292, but they were doomed by six turnovers. You heard that right, six turnovers. Losing that game 31-19 against Tommy DeVito under center was embarrassing. I'm sure Washington will be looking for some payback. As mentioned at the beginning, the way to make money in the NFL is by attacking the bookies' prop bets. Those are the most vulnerable bets by a wide margin, and this is where I've made most of my money since 1999. I want to boost your bankroll. For this reason, I'm going to share my top 3 prop bets for the Thursday night game between Buffalo and Miami, 10 prop bets for the slate of games on Sunday, and finally, 3 prop bets for the Monday night game between the Falcons and the Eagles. If you wish to receive those plays directly in your mailbox, simply follow the link below in the comments section. You get to choose whether you want all of those 16 value wagers for week 2, or if you prefer to stick to the Thursday night or only, or just the Sunday games, or just the Monday game. It's up to you, my friend. Whatever you do, I implore you to start focusing on pro bets, because this is where money can be made in the NFL. You won't find any huge bargains when looking at point spreads or totals, since millions of people around the world are also focusing on those lines. I'm Professor MJ, I'm here to serve you, and more importantly, I'm here to do my very best to make you a winner in the sports betting world. What a great feeling it is, and I want to share it with you. Cheers, my bookie-crushing friend!